Ooh, I've been wanting to do this video. I love the history of things. So this is going to be the history of threads. We're going to start with kind of the boring stuff and then we're going to jump into uh, the drama behind creating threads. 400 BC, Archytas, the founder of mechanics. He basically helped develop a press for extracting oils out of olives and juices out of grapes and you know further the technology of the screw. So 250 BC, Archimedes developed the principle behind the screw pump. Now, when I say develop the principle, he didn't actually create the screw. They've actually found evidence of screws being created before then. But the screw pump, which you can Google it, is basically used to extract water out of whatever they're trying to extract it out of, lakes, things like that. So it's this big handle that they're cranking and the screw pump's kind of at an angle and it takes the water and screws it out. This is, and now we're about to jump into the 1700s, uh, 1750, Antoine Fiat created the lead screw for, or invented the lead screw for the lathe. That way you can make threads mechanically on a lathe. Now, t fast forward 20 years, a guy named Jesse Ramsden, James, Jesse Ramsden, he created a gear changing lathe so you can make more accurate threads. And if you think about it, that's, that's, really really good because when it comes to complex assemblies um, micrometers for example you need fine threads so you need a machine that can change the spindle speeds and the feed rates in order to create accurate threads so this is kind of where the drama starts going crazy people are freaking out because from 1770 to about like 1841 people are making threads and they're making assemblies they're, they're making these huge, huge assemblies, not little ones, but like big assemblies. And every time they make a bolt, they have to recreate that thread. There's no standardization for anything. So people are just running, running wild. So uh, this guy named Joseph Whitworth, so if you've heard of the Whitworth thread in 1841, he was like, fuck this shit, I'm going to go get a standardization for some stuff. So in Britain, he's running around to all these different workshops, grabbing bolts, and trying to figure out a standardization for the world. So he uh, developed two principles. Number one, threads are 55 degrees. And number two, for the varying diameters, the thread per inch needs to change. So, you know, that makes, that makes sense. 20 years later or so, in about 1864, a guy named William Sellers, was an American, uh, said, fuck your shit. I'm going to make it 60 degrees, and instead of radial roots and crests, I'm going to make them flat. It makes sense. Flat crests and roots are easier to make, so that way you don't have to, you know, grind the tool with radiuses and things like that. You can just turn the diameter, grind a tool, turn the threads. Makes sense. All right, and around the same time, uh, the continental Europe... Germany and uh, France are kind of coming up with their own standardization as well. So you got Joseph Whitworth, he created the British standard. You have William Sellers, he created the American standard, the NC, the American uh, standard coarse threads, and the NF, the fine series. So you got coarse threads, you got fine threads. And then you have uh, random people in Germany and France that helped develop the metric thread. And that's that's the history of the thread. So, there's a lot more into it, so you can look up uh, all these people on Wikipedia and read about them, and there's a lot more behind their story than just threads. But Archimedes, Arhitas, Antoine Theot, Jesse Ramsden, you have Joseph Whitworth, the Whitworth thread, then you have William Sellers and random people in Germany and France, and you have the people that invented the lathe. I mean, there's so much more history. But these are the main names that pop up whenever you're looking up the history of threads. So make sure that you read about these people to really appreciate how much these people had to go through in order to machine. See, we're spoiled nowadays with, if you want a Mazak, you just type in the thread per inch. You type in just the, the basic information, work your tool in, and you have a thread. These people went through a lot more to get threads. And you have CNC machinists that complain, but they didn't have to go through near what you know, Archimedes, Arhitas, and all these other people had to go through in order to have a basic thread. And, and, and that makes a huge difference. They had the passion, they had the want to, 
And nowadays, it's, it's hard to find. So just understand that we, if we have these machines that can do this stuff nowadays, imagine these same people with the same passion on these machines on what they could do and what they could invent. I mean, there's still more out there that needs to be done. So hope this helps somebody. If not, at least it's an interesting story. Uh, and if you didn't catch all that, you know, Google it. Just uh, look up History of Threads. There's a lot of articles on it. Um, we're going to do more videos on History of the Lathe micrometers, things like that. Basically, just whenever I feel like doing a video on the history of something, if I come across something that's a really cool story, I'm going to bring it up. Don't forget to subscribe. There will be more videos coming very soon.